This is me, Ended Viking. This is the game I'm talking about today. It's called Deus Ex Machina. Now, you may or may not know that stands for The Machine of the Gods. Uh, the Machine of the Gods is a plot device used in movies and plays and operas and what have you uh, that basically what it is, what it stands for is that when the heroes or whoever are placed into some position uh, that the plot has put them in where nothing is going right, it seems like they are on the verge of doom, uh, but then uh, serendipity or the gods uh, intervene, and uh, as luck would have it, they escape, and everything turns out okay. And But that is kind of, like I said, like the, the play version of it. Now, in this game, uh, the machine, machine of the gods, in references the heroes of ancient Greece that are being influenced uh, by the Greek gods of the Greek mythos, uh, attempting to uh, use them uh, to glorify themselves to become uh, the most uh, important or most influential or the most revered uh, god at that time. Uh, they do this by sending those heroes off to do quests. Uh, they could be to slay uh, mythological monsters like the Chimera or just like take part in races or things like that and when they succeed in those you gain renown victory points and then once you've uh, achieved an objective that you're given at the beginning of the game each person will have a different objective uh you are then able to declare victory and then everybody else kind of has to raise one last turn to try to catch up and 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 also uh make their objective and then see if they have more victory points than you at the very end so uh the game has a little bit of a worker placement thing going on it has some uh, variable powers depending upon the, the spots that you choose and how you use the spots on the board so it's a lot of fun uh so let me show you exactly how the game is played and we'll come back here and I'll give you my final thoughts. All right, cool. All right, this is Deus Ex Machina or Deus Ex Machina as one of my friends likes to say, but he's wrong. Uh, but anyway, uh, before I dive in and show you how a game is played, uh, just keep in mind what I have in front of you is uh, kind of a print and play prototype that I was sent. So uh, the final result is not necessarily going to look like this and I can almost guarantee you uh, that the final published version will not look like this, but this is a very playable version that they sent me. All right, so uh, it's a three-player game. I've set up all three players. Over here is Ares, this is Hermes, and this is Athena. And as I said, these are gods that are kind of warring against each other, and they're trying to influence the different heroes uh, to complete tasks. And basically, they're trying to establish themselves as the most important god uh, in the mythos, if you will. So, uh, to begin the game, uh, each person will... I have different heroes. Uh, what they're going to do is they're going to send them out on the board, uh, and the hero cards are over here, and they're also represented by these little tokens that you have. And then there's also quests on the board that you're going to be trying to complete. But also, uh, before the game begins, there's two things that happen. Uh, first, you're going to get uh, two quests, and I'm just going to kind of show you the two quests that I drew uh, for Hermes here. Um, that's like defeating the Hydra and defeating the Tumesian Wolf. And you can see there's like the victory point reward over here is three victory points. Over here it's eight victory points. And then it shows that you have to have five might and five cunning uh, to defeat the Hydra. Now this symbol right here it tells you where you have to travel on the map to complete this quest. And the, that symbol shows up right there as well. And so in uh, difference than the Tumesian Wolf, you, know, you have to go to the blue symbol, which you can see right there. Um, these two quests, and you can see everybody has these two quests, before you can even attempt to say, I'm winning the game, uh, because each person is going to have a secret objective, which I'll show you here in just a moment, before you can even attempt that, you have to complete uh, your two secret quests before you can do that. So just keep that in mind. Now, uh, objectives. So each person is going to get a secret objective card, and so what this is, is it. this is what you have to complete to be able to say then, I won the game. But remember, first you have to complete these two quests. So, then you can try to complete these objectives. So, this would mean that you've completed one quest of each of these colors, and if they ended up being the quest that you dropped, or I, should, I shouldn't say dropped, that you got, your two secret quests, all well and good, that, that you can use them for that, but you're going to obviously going to need other complete other quests as well. And you had over 39 victory points, you then could turn this over on your turn and say, I've you know won the game, or I've triggered the end game. And then everybody else gets one more turn, and they can try to com 
both complete their objective and get more victory points than you, and then they can uh, claim victory. And so other things you can see, the one thing that you can see here, this is L, stands for a legendary quest. And there are several of these legendary quests, and I, there's one out here that you can see, I'll just show that to you. Uh, here's the Chimera. It takes nine might and five cunning to defeat. You know, it's located here where that little yellow snake is. And you can see the L is located there and it's worth 12 victory points. So, but obviously it's a little more difficult. All right, so that's pretty straightforward. So let me just actually kind of show you uh, what you'll be doing on your turn. Uh, what you'll do is you're gonna take uh, a hero. You're gonna, you're gonna pick a hero uh, that's over in this location. And these are available to you. Uh, and then you get to send them um, on these quests if you can complete the quest. Now you'll notice like one of these heroes, and you can see this is like Hippolyta, and she has two might and three cunning. Now obviously, and if you don't, if, like if you wanted to say, you know, defeat uh, this bull of Argolid uh, for, for three victory points. Um, the four might, she doesn't have enough of that. However, you can, and, and you know, prior to that, just send um, a person to a spot on the board to collect the reward that's on that board. And, you, and just so you can see, like if you go here, it's worth one might and one cunning. Uh, if you go here, you can pick two might or two cunning, two might and so forth. And so you can just do that to kind of prep yourself by just saying, I'm sending a hero there. You collect the two might and then you mark that two might on your player board like so. Then on a later turn, you can send your hero out um, to that location um, and then actually complete it because you can actually add to their ability by putting them out there. However, there is something really neat here. You'll notice that there's this little plus two here and this little plus one there. Because of the fact that once you use these heroes up, these things will slide up and so forth um, at the end of your turn, this is like how prepared they are. Like the, the hero is considered to be like tired right here. And then they're like getting a little more active here and then finally they're fresh and ready here. That plus two or plus one actually allows you to put that bonus into play and give them plus two to either might or cunning to help them complete a quest for you. So in this situation, if you wanted to take out the bull of Argolid, you could select Hippolyta and say, that person is gonna go on the quest for me. They're gonna go there. They have plus two to their might because of the fact that they are fresh and ready. You choose might. They then have four might and you can collect this quest. Pretty straightforward. Now you'll also notice that the heroes have this little symbol on there as well. If you are lucky enough to be able to send them to a quest that actually has like in the same location, that location actually is like their homeland, and so they get a bonus of plus one to their might or cunning, not both, one or the other, that can also help you as well. So you can kind of you know combine those those different synergies, if you will, as the game is uh, rolling along. And that's one of the things I like about this game, is that you can kind of figure out that puzzle. You can say, I really want that. How am I going to figure out how am I going to work that in? And how am I going to make that happen? Something that I always enjoy about games, like figuring out that kind of word problem, math problem on your turn, if you will. Now, obviously, as these get used, you know, they, they go into a discard pile. If you ever run out of heroes, because this is the hero deck, so like, and then we'd, you know, if we used up those two, you would just, you know, replace them. So here's Theseus, and uh, here's Oedipus. And so you can kind of put these in there, and then they all have different abilities and the, the same colors and so on and so forth. So... And then, but once you run out, you then shuffle up the hero deck and, and then re redistribute them. A couple other things quickly is that all of the heroes, uh, like Athena, Theseus is her personal hero. That's like the one that uh, that, that that is kind of like her, um, like I wouldn't say avatar, but definitely the, the, the person that's closely uh, uh, affiliated with her. And like Hermes has Perseus and Ares uh, has Penthesilia, or I, 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 Penthesilia. So if you use somebody else's personal hero, they get two victory points because you're actually glorifying them because you're sending out this hero to complete that quest. So something you have to think about. And also a thing of you as, your, as yourself, you don't usually want to use that hero because you want somebody else to use them theoretically so you can get some victory points on the side as well. Okay, a couple other things quickly, uh, so you can, uh, other locations on the board that you can go. You might have noticed that there is uh, this uh, temple here. Uh, the temple, actually, when you go there, it allows you to draw one of these Divine Intervention cards. You can kind of see the Divine Intervention cards 
players start with some. So the Divine Intervention cards are just what you probably wouldn't expect from a game like this. It's something that you can do that'll let you change the rules a little bit. So here's bribery. You spend two might and two cunning and you take two victory points. So maybe that's what you need to get you to like your 37 victory point so that you need to say, declare yourself a victor, something like that. Or uh, in his sandal, switch two hero cards on the game mechanism. That's a little wordy. What that basically means is that on this board here, if you really wanted like, you know, uh, like you, you needed like five might and five cunning, you could say, I'm gonna switch Perseus and I'm going to go ahead and put Theseus up there so I can get, you know, and then I'll have plus two, maybe. And so then I can, like, maybe you needed, like, seven cunning. And, then, you know, and, and, and Theseus has five cunning. And so you moved him up there so you get a plus two. And then you could use that to get that. That's what those, you know, so there's different cards like that that allow you just to kind of mess with things and change things up. Now, apart from everything else, uh, each god has a special power uh, that they can do. And they it's a one-time, one-shot thing, but you can gain it back uh, by, uh, you know, by, by going to, uh, it's called the altar, and it's this button, this spot right here. I think it's going to be different once the game is published, but this is just what's used for this time. Each one has a special power that they can enact, but in order to get it back, they have to send a hero uh, to this location to basically recharge it, and that's the altar of sacrifice. You also get uh, one point of either might or cunning uh, when you go there as well. Now, the special powers are a little varied, but um, they do come in very handy. Like, so, for example, uh, Ares uh, has the ability to um, reserve a hero until your next turn. So, basically, you can take your entire turn, but say you really wanted, you know, maybe you used Theseus, but you wanted to use Perseus uh, the, on your next turn. You have plans for him. You can reserve a hero, and then uh, they can't be used by anybody else on the turn. They can move up and you know move up on the board uh, because other people have taken other heroes, but then you could reserve that one and you basically place your marker on it saying, I'm reserving Perseus. Nobody can take that. And then on your next turn, then you'd go ahead and be able to use them. Uh, Athena over here has the ability um, on any quest found in the quest track, you can reduce the cunning requirement for that quest by two. And so you just say, well, normally, it's like, if you wanted to do the, the Chimera, like, you have the might put aside, you know, for to, to defeat the Chimera for a legendary quest, but you don't have the cunning. You don't have five cunning, you could put it on there, make it three cunning, and then you could complete it. And, for example, then Hermes, uh, it allows you to take um, a, any somebody else's, if they have a Divine Intervention card, like Athena has uh, this one, uh, Powerful Presence, you, you could take that card from their hand and add it to yours. You can just steal the card. And so those are some of the special abilities you have. And um, the, the, you situationally, they can be very, very powerful, as you need be. So, so there you go. Uh, like as I said, the game will continue um, until somebody declares victory. Oh, and one last thing before I cut away. If for whatever reason you just can't seem to get, maybe like you need this legendary quest, you just can't seem to get a legendary quest done, you can then instead just have one quest completed from all six of the locations. So you have all six colors uh, completed for quests. That also can be used by you saying, look, I have all six colors that I've completed. You still have to complete your two secret quests that you have, but you have completed all six of those, and then you can say, and without doing the secret objective, then you can say, I'm declaring victory, and then everybody else then has to kind of race to catch up and, uh, you know, see if they can uh, beat you as far as, like, your victory points, if you will. So there you go. That is how you play uh, Deus Ex Machina. It's a lot of fun. Um, I, I enjoy, uh, like, the... the, the the both simple rule set, but also, like I said, that kind of story problem, word problem thing of figuring out how am I going to get these necessary points that I need? How am I going to get the right hero that's going to be perfect for me to do this certain action, get this certain quest done, that sort of thing. So it's a lot of, it's very enjoyable. But let me talk to you about all of that uh, with my final thoughts. All right, thanks for taking the time to watch the How It's Played portion of the video. Uh, I just remembered one thing, and I apologize for forgetting. So uh, here's the board, and here is the adventure track. And you might see this, and it might be tough to see, but there's, there's a plus three, and then a plus two, and then a plus one, minus one, and then a minus two. All right, so those actually, depending upon where the quest is, remember, it, it's traveling up on this board. So they'll start off in the bottom, and as they're taken, they, they travel up. You get that bonus in victory points. I forget. I apologize for not mentioning that. Uh, I should have, and I'm sorry. Uh, so, like, the top one is plus three victory points. The second one is plus two. 
The third one with the plus one minus one means you get one victory point and you get to take away a victory point from somebody else. And the last one with the minus two allows you to take two victory points from somebody else. Now you're not taking those and like cashing them yourselves. You're just removing them and lowering the victory points to somebody else, which is important because remember all of these objectives uh, that you have uh, in these objectives cards have uh, a victory point total that you have to reach before you can turn the card over. So, and that's one of the things I like about the game is that there are multiple ways like that and also, you know, different divine intervention cards and things that allow you to actually remove points from people. And that's something I've always like enjoyed. I always hated the fact that when I watched somebody like moving their little marker and like going up the victory point track, there was no way to like kind of drag them back to you, you know, if you will. You just you just had to race faster, you know, to catch up. But here's a game that you can and you are allowed and it's part of the game uh, to do that. So, uh, you know, the game is fairly straightforward. I would put it on the easier like wait list as far as complexity of rules and also like um, the type of game it is. Uh, this is a game that I consider to be a conversational game. Um, I put it on the same level of like, a, say, a Pillars of the Earth, if you're familiar with that game. Uh, this is a game where you know, you don't have to do a lot of deep you know, thinking when it isn't your turn. You can kind of watch the game progress. You can kind of look at the different heroes and quests that are available to you. But once your turn comes, you kind of just can, it, it's, it's a relative, relatively easy to kind of figure out the best path you take, but it is really, really fun because it, it, it is that type of game. I really enjoy this kind of game when I uh, I don't want to have a big meaty thinky night. Uh, I want to have like a, a thing where uh, you know I've gotten my wife to play, uh, maybe my like more casual gamers have come over and it's something where you know we can enjoy like a, a, a glass of wine or, or a glass of beer or just enjoy each other's company uh, and, and the game is so much the focus of the night the game the focus is our friendships and 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 you know enjoying that moment and if you're that type of gamer if you're more of a casual gamer if you have a group of casual gamers that are kind of like in the hobby but not in the hobby like if you know what i mean um this is an excellent game for that purpose plus it could bridge the gap to get to those meteor games that you probably have uh that you you know would like to spring on them but you need that little step stool to kind of get to that level now all that put aside, one of the things I really like about the game is not only because of the fact that like you're moving to these different locations, and I sh I think I mentioned but if I didn't, you know, you once you put your guy in that location for that round, nobody else can use that. So having the first player marker is very very important. And I should also mention, I know I forgot this, you get the first player marker by actually going and uh, you know praying at the temple so you not only do you you know get the bonus for going there uh, with the divine intervention cards, but you actually take the first player token. Apologize for not mentioning that. So getting going first is like one of those things that's really important with this game because of the fact that then then you you have a wide plethora of things that are available to you. However, going later in the turn can actually be very beneficial because the quest that you're looking for will have moved up the track and all of a sudden now it's worth some bonus victory points for you when it finally gets to you. Uh, the same thing can be said uh, for you know, the different heroes, you know, like them freshening up and what have you as, as, as they travel up the board. And so it's one of those things where, um, you know, I found the game to be, you know, a game of not only that kind of like story problem-esque thing, like how am I going to get those points? How am I going to get this thing? How am I going to be able to claim that? Um, but it also becomes a game of timing. And, and trying to like establish like the best possible time uh, to take a certain action or take a certain hero, take a certain quest, that sort of thing. And I've always liked games that kind of challenge me with that aspect of it. So, and, it, and, and it, hopefully, you know, if that's something you're looking for as well, uh, I think you really enjoy this. Like as I said, if you are somebody that enjoys a worker placement, you enjoy this theme, uh, like, you know, the, the, the ancient Greece and, and the different gods, that theme, I think you'll really enjoy it. If you want um, a game that's kind of on like little light i'd say medium light i guess if i will and you want to put that in your shelf so you have that as an option i think you definitely will want to check this one out so there you go if you have any questions about the game ask away i'll be happy to answer those to the best of my ability uh as always thank you very much for taking the time uh to watch this video and until next time i'm the undead viking and i'm telling you to have yourself one heck of an awesome day all right bye-bye